Simon Boots. I'm Deputy Divisional General Manager of a Heart Division at a Specialist London Hospital. It's a general management role, so it can be quite wide-ranging what I have to do from day to day. But more often than not, the things that I have to do are things like personnel management, service management, budgetary oversight as well. I have to link with various external regulatory bodies. They could be in the NHS or they could be outside of the NHS. I also have to link with key stakeholders who support the services that come under my remit. And I have to link with people who pay for the services in the hospital as well. So different clinical commissioning groups that are in and around London. The good thing about the NHS is that all the salaries in terms of the, the, the pay ranges are published online and something called Agenda for Change. So for someone who's just leaving school, you could be looking at getting, say, a band two to a band four job with salaries around sort of fifteen to twenty thousand pounds per annum. If you graduate, realistically, sort of band five, maybe even band six, which can be sort of twenty to thirty thousand, uh, as, as ballpark uh, figures. And you have to take into account as well that if you're looking to get a job in London then in the NHS you do get a, a higher cost of living allowance as well, which is usually a percentage of your salary. In terms of the route I took, it was a pretty traditional one in uh, that I studied my GCSEs, my A-levels, went on to university and then got a job in healthcare provision and then tried to get experience in general management and then applied for a GM's role, but that's by no means the only way to get into a management role in a hospital. Other ways that you could think of, you could leave school and try to get a job in an organisation, get the experience you need, get access to training, get access to courses, and then work your way up within that company. Or you could look for things like apprenticeships, training schemes or cadet schemes, which in most companies they'll offer, most big companies they will offer something like that, but in the NHS they do offer it and it's quite an extensive offering as well and certainly that's something which would give you not just the academic grounding but the practical skills and experience to step into a management role or a senior management role in the, in the NHS. In terms of a minimum if you look perhaps at some of the apprenticeship schemes then the entry requirements will mandate GCSEs. Quite often they will say that you will need A-levels as well, but not all the time. And certainly I work with people who, who don't have degrees, who have either done an apprenticeship or got a job, say, front of house or on reception in a hospital, got that experience and worked their way up. So I would say minimum you would need is your GCSEs. Uh, so really important to get them in the bag. From there, it's quite varied actually as to, to what you would then need to, to be able to get a job in an organisation in the senior management role. In terms of the structure in this hospital and most hospitals in the NHS, it's quite transparent and it's quite easy for people to see what their next step is going to be. So you might come in at an entry level role and work your way up to say, something like a team lead role, to a service manager role, to a general management role like myself and then you'd be looking to maybe progress into an executive level role or a board level role and that for me, my, my five to ten year plan is to eventually try and secure a position as an executive for the hospital. Yeah, I think if we were having this conversation say 10 to 15 years ago where employers looked heavily for degree educated candidates then my answer would be very different and I would be really sort of promoting the values of going to university and getting a degree. I don't think that really applies now and I think that the investment in apprenticeships and cadet schemes and training schemes from the government really signals their intent to support that access into organisations and the NHS is a really, really good example. I think both routes to getting an education and practical experience I think they're both valid, I think they both have their merits. As to, to advocate one over the other, it's difficult to say and I think it really is down to the individual and the circumstances that they find themselves in at the time. It might be that the apprenticeship route which does give you a lot more practical experience and is specifically designed to get you into a role if you're sure of what you want to do at that time, that might be the best option 
for you. If you're like me and you're perhaps a little bit open to what you want to do, you might look to go to university, uh, study a subject that you like, and then see what happens from there. Both good ways of doing it, and I think neither one better than the other. The good thing about the NHS is that all the salaries in terms of the, the, the pay ranges are published online and something called Agenda for Change. So for someone who's just leaving school, you could be looking at getting, say, a band two to a band four job with salaries around sort of 15 to 20,000 pounds per annum. If you graduate, realistically, sort of band five, maybe even band six, which can be sort of 20 to 30,000 uh, as, as ballpark figures. And you have to take into account as well that if you're looking to get a job in London, then in the NHS you do get a, a higher cost of living allowance as well, which is usually a percentage of your salary or something fixed that just gets added on. When you're working your way up, if you're looking at sort of service management roles, usually management roles start around the 8, 8A banding in the NHS. And so that's around the sort of 50 to, to 60,000 pound mark. And then as you get into the more senior managements, depending on the size of the hospital as well, you'd be looking at sort of 8C, 8D, and very senior, the very senior management, which is a band nine as well. So that can really be looking at salaries between sort of 70 and 100,000 pounds a year. Every healthcare provider that comes under the NHS banner or any affiliated department in the NHS should have the ability to offer some form of work experience. And it's quite varied as to how they would offer it. So in hospitals, there should be a designated HR contact who can run a work experience programme, tell any interested work experience candidate who to contact and how they could go about arranging work experience in the hospital. There's also a lot of information about it online and that's available at healthcareers.nhs. UK, which is an open access website which covers not just work experience but access to apprenticeships, training schemes and cadet schemes as well. When thinking about getting work experience in the NHS, people should look beyond just a hospital or a GP practice because there are really sort of three elements that combine to form national health in this country and that is the, the, the regulatory side so that could be things like external regulatory bodies to oversee performance of hospitals and GP services and social care to entities that write things like guidelines and governing protocols. There's the commissioning side of things as well so you've got clinical commissioning groups. These are the guys who would basically fund different aspects of healthcare provision in the NHS. They would say that this is what's needed and this is the money that you're going to get and these are the standards that a hospital would have to hit to be able to deliver that particular piece of healthcare provision. And then you've got the really obvious side of things as well, which is the hospital and the GP surgeries. So if you're looking to get work experience, I was lucky, I, was ma I managed to get work experience uh, in a hospital, but it was very, very difficult. Although all hospitals do have work experience schemes, the demand for getting a place on them is, is actually is quite high, it's very, very competitive. And I think that if you just took a step back and thought, well, actually, perhaps I could get experience with my local clinical commissioning group instead, you would probably get just as much, if not a little bit more, out of that because they would tell you all the standards that hospitals have to hit. They would tell you all of the guidelines that they would mandate in order for a service to be deemed safe and for them to go on funding it. So you would still get all of that information that you need and you'd probably be able to spend more time in that environment than you would trying to arrange work experience with a busy ward matron in a hospital. So it might serve you better just to think a little bit more naturally as to what your options might be when getting work experience. The main things I look for on a CV is that the information is concise and relevant. And I think setting it out in a structured way, so looking on a careers advice website, which would tell you how to structure a CV so that the, the headline information that employers are looking for is very, very visible, easy for them to find. The specific things that I look for is the evidence that the person applying has actually read the job advert and they've made their application as specific to the job as possible, relating their experiences to some of the core requirements of the role. Being able to evidence delivery 
of a project, a piece of change management, so something that a candidate has identified as, as being something that needs to be done. They've planned it out and they've been able to deliver on That's something that I do find very, very appealing because that is a skill that trans transfers very, very well to the professional environment. Another thing that I think would really support an application is, is if the applicant made contact with the recruiter prior to an interview. Certainly when I've been able to meet someone before their interview date, it's given me a much better idea about them and it just tells me as well that they've really considered the role and they're really taking it seriously.